Hello! Something I've been after for a while today, it is the Runcam Thumb. This tiny little camera. The idea of a, a very small HD camera, is, it's not a new one. Back in the day, like, oh, I don't know, up to about eight years ago, we used to run things like the little key cams. Uh, the Mobius was the most famous one, but before then we had the the little 808 cameras, which were little tiny things, did 720p. Obviously, the, the idea behind this one, aside from the fact it's fairly cheap and records in 1080p, is it records accelerometer data, so you should be able to put this whole thing into gyroflow and come up with smooth footage. Now, that's something I've never played with before, so I'm also quite interested to know how this goes. How difficult is this to use the software? How does this work as just a regular camera? How do we how do we work it essentially? But it's very small, so let's go into close up, see what's in the box, and see what we need to do to get it installed. Okay, so this is the Runcam Fun. So let's just get it out of the box and see what we've got here. You've obviously got the lens. I'll take this cover off. And you know, I don't know if I'm supposed to film this way or this way. I will find out. That's a little button. I think that literally switches the camera on or off or recording on and off. You've got your uh, ground and five volts so this has got no battery of its own you have to plug it into something to run it and under here just under there you've got where you put your SD card so that just pops off there it does feel very very light like it's not there slightly delicate perhaps but we'll see anyway what else is in the box I suppose is the question um, bits of foam and what's this Oh, okay, so we've got some instructions here. Ah, missed a bit, look. Just look in here, there's a USB connector there. I guess that's for updating your uh, firmware and stuff like that and connecting to a computer, yep. It says, make sure camera firmware is 210 or above. I'll be looking at this bit in a minute. But what we got, what else we got under here? Okay, so it looks like some sort of mounting thing, which is helpful. Right, okay, good stuff. We've got a cable, which will obviously go in there. And then we need to supply this with five volts from our flight controller or something like that. USB-C to USB, I wouldn't say USB-A, I would say regular USB cable. Um, and then we've got, oh, we've got a little lens, is that a lens cap? This might be an ND filter. It kind of looks like an ND filter some screws there which I guess is for this bit that's to like hold it in and we've got some sort of mounting here so we'd put that together and then we'd attach it to something somehow uh, this looks like an alternative mounting so what we got here is sort of I call this the sort of GoPro style of things with the, the sort of triple thingy and then a piece of TPU which you'd squeeze it in and mount it that way. It all looks pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah, first things first, I'd better check what firmware this is on, uh, work out how to use it, and then we'll, we'll put it together. We'll put one of these mounting options on. Probably that one looks a bit more easy. Well, that's, uh, that's quite a squeeze. I have to say that it's really quite a squeeze. Maybe that one then. <laughs> we'll be putting one of these on and then testing it out and seeing how it does, working out what the hell this gyro flow thing is and, and how to use it all. Okay, so I've just gone and had a quick look at the Runcam's homepage. It seems like the latest version is v 2.1 and I wanted to know what version I had on it. And what should happen is if I connect the Runcam thumb to my computer via USB, it should generate this thumb.conf file, which I've done and it has happened. And this looks like this. And if you are older people and you remember stuff like the Mobius or the uh, 808 cams, this is going to be very familiar with you because this is pretty much how you changed all the settings. And so this is on 210, which is great. It's got its default resolution at 1080p 60. However, if you want to create this GS, uh, GCSV file, which is the thing that actually creates the uh, gyro data, not accelerometer as I said previously, I always get those two mixed up. Um, it does recommend you set it to 1080p 50. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn 
my gyro data to on and then I'm going to change the video resolution to one the rest of it I think I can leave alone we're not doing loop recording um, auto record it could be handy I'm going to leave that off for now and then just sort of turn it on when I want to and then we're basically defaulting our exposure and brightness and sharpness and contrast and saturation and all the rest of it yeah so I'm going to save that and um, let's see what happens see if I can generate one of these uh, gyro files okay we've mounted the comet up on this quad this is the hobby mate comet which is a quad I haven't used for a couple of years it's still on beta flight 3 5 something but I thought it's a quad I want to fly some more and the farm shouldn't be seen as just something that fits on you know small quads there's there's no reason not to put it on whatever quad you like that one of the points of view is it's cheap you don't have to smash up a GoPro um, and hopefully this gyro flow thing should help us so I'm gonna have a fly around I'm gonna do a couple because I've got the ND filter I'm gonna fly it without it first see um, and see what difference it makes I won't know until I get back of course so I'll just do a few batteries and see what goes on <laughs> Okay, so there's two things to mention at this point. The first was the uh, the sound. That's the recording from the run cam farm. And as far as audio goes, I think that's pretty good. Couldn't detect any particular wind noise. I had to turn the volume down a little bit because it, it basically clips, but the rest of it's okay. The more important thing though is, is what we've got on screen now. You will notice I've left the OSD uh, DVR recording in the bottom right corner. The reason for that is when I looked back at this footage, from the farm I thought well that looks horrific what was my DVR doing and as as I recall it this quad flies very smoothly uh, so when I fly in it I don't get any bobbles or shakes or anything but as you can see that has not translated through at all to the run cam farm we've got vibrations going everywhere so although that mount is is basically on a, a sort of piece of 3M sticky that they provided which I thought would dampen a bit it looks like every single vibration has transferred directly through to the camera sensor and we're in jello and shake city which is uh, which is pretty odd I know if I stuck a GoPro on here the footage would be silky smooth but on this it's very bad indeed however this was the first recording and one other interesting thing about this is that at the end of uh, the flight, I simply unplugged the battery. I forgot to turn the recording off. So I was interested to know if that would have any problems and it doesn't, which is a good thing. So for the second flight I did, I put the ND filter on. To do this, it's pretty simple. There's just this uh, the primary lens kind of just unscrews with like half a turn and then you put the ND filter on and you're away. And I think this looks slightly better it's getting rid of some of those shakes but not all of them I haven't put the DVR footage on here but the, the smoothness is the same in the quad the quad feels really smooth it looks absolutely great in the goggles but the footage we then get from the run cam farm I have to say I was pretty disappointed with when I got this back home but I thought not a problem because this is recording gyro data and what I did before I went out flying I just did a quick uh, clip uh, in the house just you know turning it on turning it off again and just check I had one of these files they create they, they create a separate file to the video file and they have the extension of .gcsv uh, so you know if you've, you've got them or not so back home I went hoping to get this thing cleared up and went into gyro flow okay well first off let me tell you this is in no way supposed to be any sort of gyro flow tutorial I have watched a bunch of videos from the likes of Nurk and other people just understand the process of this and I've gone ahead and I've opened up my file that's the mp4 file I've gone ahead and used someone else's run cam fun profile for 50 frames per second at 1080p and I've gone ahead and opened up my gyro data there you'll notice I've got a low pass filter of 43 Hertz applied this is because that's what the run cam site tells you to do along with turning on rolling shutter to correction I've gone ahead I've synced up my points I've checked that the points match um, I've pretty much set auto zoom and 
smoothness. Uh, you know, I've played around with these things all the time, but it doesn't correct the problem we have with the shake. You can see it's definitely doing something. If I change the field of view bigger, you will notice that the you can see gyro flow doing stuff to to smooth out the large movements, but it can't help us on this little shaky stuff. So let me export this. I'm not going to go into this in, in big detail because I don't think this footage can be saved. But let me export this and we'll go side by side with non-stabilized against stabilized on this flight and see how it looks. And here we have the two footages uh, side by side. On the left hand we've got the raw unstabilized footage that I took from the Ramcam farm. This is with the ND filter. And on the right hand side we have the Gyroflow stabilized footage which I should really put in inverted commas because it's kind of doing the opposite of what you want. It actually looks worse. You can see it's zooming in and at this resolution zooming in you know isn't isn't great. So the unstabilized footage isn't nice but it makes it look better. Let me go forward a little bit where we've got some sort of more um, bigger movements and stuff to see how that works. So I'm in no way saying that Gyroflow is, is rubbish and doesn't work. Clearly it gets fantastic results, but if you give it absolute trash data, it, it can't do too much with it. And I feel the problem here is that the, the gyro data is probably all over the place because this thing is just bouncing around everywhere. So it can pick up like the big sweeping movements um, as a sort of turning and, and doing little moves there when the rest of the footage is nice and clear. When the entire thing is just a mess of vibrations, obviously this is where it falls over. Uh, and this is kind of the problem where if you just sort of fly the run cam fun uh, and expect it to kind of work out without doing an awful lot more with it, you're going to get very bad results as I have here. So first impressions of the fun not particularly good, but let's let's talk about conclusions. So once again, if you watched the Camera 7 review, um, I filmed this all a couple of weeks ago and I've had COVID and I'm still recovering, but I thought I'd put the video out now um, before I revisit it. Uh, that's the last one I'll be doing this. I'll stop whinging about COVID in future. But anyway, I'm not very impressed, first off. And you could argue that, oh, you know, you didn't do enough to work with it and uh, of course it's not going to get good results because you've just put it on a quad. But at the same time, I, I like to do several things, one of which is to test them as they come. And of course Runcam know exactly what this is designed for. They've literally built this camera for putting on a quad. And they gave us this mount and this mount. And one would expect they've tested it out, they've stuck it on a quad, they've flown it around and they say, these are brilliant results, we'll get that out the door. But that that's not the case. If you use this mount on a smooth quad, it will wobble about. Apparently, it needs to be soft mounted. Do we do we try this TPU style mount before we move on to something else? I don't know. It it would be very good if Runcam actually did enough work to actually get this working properly. Instead of saying we've got something that's gyro data, quick get it out the door now because gyro flow is hot, and if we put gyro data in our camera things, it'd be super popular. Maybe I'm just being cynical. The other reason I want to test it like that is because it's a very low cost camera and I thought beginners um, who might not want to risk putting an expensive GoPro on there might want to get hold of it and like get some HD footage that they could share. But it's less likely beginner friendly if you're going to have to spend more time messing about with how this is mounted and then messing about in Gyroflow to actually produce a decent result. Uh, it's still cheaper than doing a GoPro, but it kind of depends how much your time is worth to sort of sort this thing out. Absolutely, I have seen good results from this. It can be done, but it's very much down to experimenting with the soft mount and seeing what works. I am no stranger to soft mounts. Back in the day when we used to mount things like GoPro sessions, we have these little squishy things. I used to save all my packaging foam of various densities to see how well it would work and stuff. It's just, I kind of thought we'd left that behind with GoPro Hypersmooth and that, but no, 
it's it's needing to be used here so i will come back and do some more on this the the, the idea was i was going to do some more flights but what i'll do now is every time i go out and test something else i will take this with me i will change the mounting and once i've worked through ones that perhaps don't work and ones that do work i will share what my path was and and what i did and then we'll look once again at what uh, gyroflow can do for us i have to say though in the footage i've seen they have got it so beautifully mounted uh just right that the actual raw footage looks pretty good so all they're taking out is more the big movements no little movements so instead of like oh i'm going around here it's it becomes a sort of more smooth flowy movement which is what you want really Anyway, make of that what you will. This has been the Run Cam Fun Camera. It was kindly supplied by Banggood for review, so many thanks to them. And of course, you'll find links down below. But I'd hold back for now, unless you've looked at other videos, you've looked at what people are doing with them, and you're confident that you can install this and get good results from that. Because if you can afford it and you've got like a GoPro 7 upwards, you're going to get much better footage uh, with much less hassle. But anyway, that's my review for now. I will be back soon with some more videos hopefully until then bye for now catch you later well you've made it to the end of the video so thanks once again for watching if you like what you saw then please consider subscribing and if you really like what you saw then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel